Hey everyone, it's Ajaxer here. I'm going to show you guys what you'll be able to make at the end of this two-part mini-tutorial that's part of the bigger tutorial series, Making Valorant and Unity. So let's hit play, and as you'll see, we have a model that we're using as a free asset. And if you shoot, you'll see that we have a spray pattern now. It shoots where we want it to, and if we hold down, we have that. We can't just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. Uh, or else it'll be pretty inaccurate so we have a reset time and yeah so hope you guys enjoy part one will be setting up the asset setting up all the art that we need part two will actually be getting into the programming part of it so if you guys like this content click the like button subscribe to my channel to get notifications about more tutorials and more videos about game development and software uh, Leave a comment if you guys have suggestions, but thank you for watching. Okay, now that we're in game, we can start testing out the spray pattern. So in Valorant, there's a bunch of different guns that you can select from, and each gun has their own unique spray pattern. So we need to create a system that allows us to to have, you know, support the many multiple guns with m different mechanics that have their own unique spray pattern so that's the first thing so we need to build a robust system and we need to be able to so if if I don't move my mouse and I just click the fire button you'll see that my gun goes up and to the left and to the right and to the left so if I do it again you'll see that it's it's not necessarily the same it's hard to see because it's going away. There's a little bit of randomness in it, and so we're not going to actually be implementing that randomness. Randomness, to me, in my personal opinion, is not necessary because it just adds frustration into the mix. And so what players will do, because of this recoil pattern, players will have to memorize a certain gun and its recoil pattern and go against its recoil pattern by moving their mouse down to be more accurate so if a player is over here and say you know if I don't move my mouse it's super inaccurate but if I start moving my mouse it's really contained in that one area so there's also a mechanic that we need to think about is when we're moving or when we're shoot when we're shooting it takes a little while for the gun re to reset see how it goes back to the original position of the crosshair so look at my gun right now I'm going up I'm going up and then it, it lurps down it kind of just animates down and that's that's what I in my I made jet dash video that's recoil reset time seconds that's how long it takes for the recoil pattern to reset so if I come here and then I wait and then I come here and then I wait so that's when it resets back to the original position so you can players will be really accurate you know but if if I'm like firing 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 it's gonna be really inaccurate so I have to wait for you know half a second or something for it to be accurate again so there's that and then it, now let's start breaking up what the gun does and what the crosshair does during our spray pattern because we need to go into this level of fine detail to really figure out how to build this thing so if you look at my crosshair in the center of the screen and you look at my gun I'm not gonna move my mouse so you, you can see that the gun goes up but the crosshair also goes up and after the spray pattern they both reset back to the same position so what's what's what it looks like to me is the gun is rotating and then the crosshair is rotating half that amount so if you look at it again with that in mind just look at this right it looks like they're both rotating they're both moving but they're moving or the crosshair is just moving at the half of it so now that we have all those things in mind let's go into making it okay the first thing that we're gonna do is when we're in unity we're gonna import this low poly FPS pack because it's free it's made by David Stenfers it's amazing he gives us some animated arms with an AK and I think he also gives us a knife with some animation the entire pack is also for sale on the unity SS store but David Stenfors is very generous to let us try out some of his uh, project on for free so we're gonna do that so just import it I'll also put a link to this oh yeah and it also comes with sounds and 
I think it comes with other things, some scripts, but we won't be using them. So, and some particles. So let's just hit import. And then we'll wait for it to import. All right, now that we have the asset imported, let's go under our assets folder and there should be a folder that is our asset low poly FPS pack. So let's go into prefabs, example prefabs, arms, assault rifle, assault rifle, and then let's just drag the assault rifle prefab under our main camera. And then the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on it under the hierarchy and then select unpack prefab completely. Okay, so now that we have that, there's some things on this prefab that we don't actually need and it's gonna cause problems. So let's delete all rigid body. Or first we have to delete the script FPS controller. Okay, audio source, capsule collider, and rigid body. And then let's come down here. That's fine, that's fine. The gun camera, let's just delete this whole object. Let's delete this whole player canvas. And then let's go under, let's go down the, the tree under armature. Let's delete this camera. And then under arms, assault rifle, or no, where's it? Weapon right here. We go under here, components. We can just delete this whole components thing. And now if we hit play, we'll see that. There is also still a script that we need to delete. So go on arms assault rifle also, and then we'll just delete this guy. Also delete the audio source and the audio source. So now if we hit play, everything looks fine. Uh, and then, so let's fix that. So let's under the assault rifle 01 FPS controller, the root of the prefab. What I have is I have 0.2 and if you I recommend doing the same numbers I have because a lot of the numbers I'm going to be using are based around where the model is positioned so negative 0.204 and 0.321 on the Z okay so now we have a better looking place alright so let's get to programming